Hello and welcome to Hooptober 8. Once again, we are back with another four videos to review. Four movies, I should say. Um, we're going to try to bust through this one real fast. We're doing this fast today. All one right. of our biggest fans gave us some advice. We're going to well, go with it. And they have been taking a while. So, we also have pizza in the oven, ready to go. And, we <laughs> and I want to watch a movie tonight. All right. First up is Nosferatu from 1979. This is directed by Werner Herzog. I believe this is the first Herzog movie I've seen. I know the guy's name. Like, he's directed a lot of stuff, I think. The only Herzog I know is Whitey. Well, but this guy is uh, very well known for um, his films. What did you think of this one? It was a very well-made film. It was beautiful. It had a lot of detail. I loved the walk to the castle. I loved a lot of things about the film. As far as the film itself, I was bored. It wasn't as exciting as, say, Bram Stoker's Dracula to me. Yeah, I gave this one four out of five stars. I really liked it. Like, I loved this movie a lot, but it was really slow. Um, I mean, it was very beautiful to look at. There was a lot of really cool scenery. Um, the audio in it was fantastic. Like where the dude's walking up to Dracula's castle door, the sound just kept getting louder and louder and louder and building up. Ken was and really then, excited to use the word crescendo. And then it just stopped right when Dracula kicked the door open and it hit the crescendo. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry if I ruined your chance to use eh, it again. <laughs> I don't care. It was, it was the other day. But it was really cool, really solid, uh, but this is kind of your basic Dracula story that you've seen a million times, and that was kind of that. The cool thing about it, though, um, I did like how it ended, and I don't remember, honestly, how Bram Stoker's ended. It, maybe it was the same way. Yeah, they all have a little bit of difference, but I for the most how Lucy part, did. this was... I liked how Lucy did it. And I was incorrect on this one. I thought this was the one where they were like... Uh, <sighs> A hundred years in the future and all, or whatever, and it was the same dude. That was a yeah, different movie. Yeah, you told me that. Because it's a I different just movie. Remembered. Right, that was a different movie. It was Under the Shadow or something like that. Shadow of Drag. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up again. But that was actually another movie. I wanted to purchase it or rent it or something, and it's not even available for on on demand. Okay. It's got like Willem Dafoe in it and um, a few others. I can't remember who all's in it, but looks really cool. Uh, that is the one where they're actually making the original movie from 1922 yeah. or whatever, or something like that. And it's the other one. He's in know. my hair. But he's not going to get in mine. I know. That's why he's I put him on your bald on head. All right. So what did you give this one? I think I gave it a four also just because it was beautiful. On your shitty scale? It's yeah, I'm working on my shitty scale. I'm trying to work on it. I'm trying to not take away because I, I realized it was a really oh, well-made movie. Oh, you are so scared. <laughs> no, I got shit to do. Little birdie's getting in my way. All right, so that was Nosferatu. We kicked over into the 80s. There's uh, three of the... There was four movies we had to pick from 1981. Uh, we're going to do three of them now. We still have yet to watch the fourth one. It's just the way all this fell with doing four at a time for the videos. So the first one was Evil Speak from 1981. Uh, what did you think of this one? I thought it was... I'm not going to use that word. It's not politically acceptable. Um, it was stupid. It was ridiculous. So first and foremost, little tidbit, the dude that starred in this was actually in The Wraith. Uh, the Wraith is like the 80s version of um, The Crow. If you've never seen The Wraith, I think you need to sit down and watch The Wraith. I love The someday. Crow, so I need to see The, the Wraith. Is, the Crow is like an exact copy of The Wraith, basically. If you take the overlying story and just take little tidbits out of it, um, I mean... I don't know if I trust you about that being exactly no. the same because I don't feel like you appreciated The Crow as much as no, I No, I love The Crow and I love The Wraith. And when I watched The Crow, I was like, hey, this looks familiar. Uh, this guy is... You know how in The Crow... Oh, we're going to get sidetracked for a second. No. Real quick. You know in The Crow where um, the bad gang is out, you know, trying yeah. to kill him? This guy's in the bad gang on The Wraith. Oh, okay. And I think it's got Charlie Sheen in it. Whatever. Anyway, this dude was in that. I liked this movie. Um, I enjoyed it. What I would love... Is, uh, so, let me back up a second. This is um, 1981, kind of around the time... Uh, oh, God. Shit, I can't think of the name of it. Um, 
oh hell, I just totally lost it. War something or other. War Games. When War Games was out. This is kind of weird. Like Tron and War Games and all these kind of movies were out about that same time. 81, 82, 83, somewhere in there. Is this it because is, of the computer? This is 1981 and it was about some dude trying to summon the devil with an Apple IIe computer or some crazy shit like that. I would love to see this remade with today's virtual reality and stuff like that. I think this would be really cool like that. It was really just kind of stupid to me, though. It but was carrying the giant computers into the yeah, it was labyrinth underneath but the church. That was in the eighties. If we did it today, I mean, honest God, where did he even plug that fucker in? Uh, the wall. I he mean, stretched it over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I cell. enjoyed this. I yeah. gave this three out of five. I was on my phone the whole time. Um, I would have given it probably. I don't remember. I did review it. I I am keeping up with my reviews now, but I think I only gave it a two probably. Uh, so that was Evil Speak from 1981. The next movie is also from 1981. This is Ghost Story. Now, this is our Fred Astaire movie. I was excited about Fred Astaire, and he did not one time do a dance step. What was Even amazing, during the dance scene. What was amazing about this movie is I would have never associated Fred Astaire with boobies and wang. And there was boobies and wang in this movie sporadically thrown throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Not Fred Astaire's wing. No. And, he was like a really old dude. Yeah. And it, it, so the story I would say you've probably seen before. I can't put my finger on where I've seen this, but I know I've seen this story. I can't tell you where, but I know I've seen this. The way... The way the, it's a familiar type of story exactly. with boys that screw up and it comes back to exactly. haunt them in their adulthood. You've known this story. And that's not giving anything away. I mean, they basically pretty much tell you that the whole way. Yeah. You'll feel very familiar with it. I thought it was shot very well. I thought for a 1981 film on Amazon Prime, I think we watched good. this. It looked awesome. It did. Um, probably a good 1080p picture. Like, you could make out the paintings in the background. And some of that looked really cool. It was great quality. Um, I gave this one three and a half stars myself. I liked the story. I think I did, too, actually. I liked how it was presented. I liked the cast. Um, it was a little slow at times. But I enjoyed the pacing. It, it, it was, was deliberate. Yeah, it was deliberate. Um, I dug that. I dug how it, it went. It kind of had to go at the pace it went, I guess, if they wanted to include everything that they included. Yeah, and I thought they did a good job of moving through the story and making it well. Yeah. So, uh, that was Ghost Story from 1981. I feel like we didn't even do that one justice because it. I think it's one that people should watch. I liked it. I, I really did like it a lot. Yeah. I mean, that was one I would watch that again. And my it. review on Letterboxd, um, I say a lot more about it than I have here, I think. so. Okay, so that was Ghost Story. Yeah. And the last movie we're going to talk about today <laughs> is The Prowler. Uh, this is also from 1981. And I'm going to start off with this one. This movie, I looked it up online uh, because I, when I watched this, I'm like, holy shit, this is my bloody Valentine. Uh, the story on this follows my bloody valentine very closely and i couldn't figure out which one came first and i thought my bloody valentine was a little bit later but they both came out in 1981 um ken's obviously unable to watch a movie without no you don't understand if you look this movie up there's tons of people that compare these two together like the stories are almost identical up to a certain point uh the whole thing in my bloody valentine tell me if you've heard this they have a party. Somebody gets killed. The city doesn't want to have the party for I years. may have even seen My Bloody Valentine. Right. I just you, don't remember There's a remake it. of that one. Um, but that one's about minors, and it's Canadian, and this one is, I think it's U.S. Um, yeah, this is U.S. And oh, I thought it was English yesterday no, this when one's we watched US. it. I thought this was okay. Um, it was just it it was was a, a slasher film. It was a little too long. It was a little slow in places, which isn't necessarily a negative. Like, they did some compelling things. There were some interesting things. But they drugged that middle part on and on and on. And, th like, they had a few kills. There was a kills I'd forgotten about. I thought there was only, like, two kills. And she's like, no, nah, there was He's more than that. He's complaining about the number of kills. He's but like, there really, two. <laughs> there re well, there really wasn't that many good kills. Like, there was one at the beginning. Uh, and then you see the new guy come along. 30 years later, and he gets two more kills, which one was this badass bayonet kill. I like that. Um, then there was a couple other weak kills that I had just totally forgotten about. Like, he chokes some chick out or stabs her or cuts her throat or something. I mean, it was kind of boring. 
Like, out of all the stuff they did, there was one solid kill. And this is a slasher movie. These are supposed to be violent and gory and have really cool kills. And this one's got some army dude running around killing people with a goddamn pitchfork. I mean, a pitchfork. I never did understand the pitchfork, and they never explained the pitchfork. There was no reason for the pitchfork. About 50-50 pitchfork and bayonet. And I'm like, why are you running around with a pitchfork? It makes no sense. Those little army shovels that you got to fold out that had been fine yeah you know yeah. or a gi shovel of some sort or yeah. something but or in the end to part. have it have ended up being a farmer or something but well no it had nothing to do with the anything. pitchfork was dumb i didn't quite catch who the killer was i mean it's i, I looked it up just because I, i'm well they show you who the killer is but i didn't quite catch it at first and, reading and when through, i said that it was obviously the guy that killed the girl in the beginning just ruining the thing no, everybody that watches it knows that it's still the guy that killed I, the first I girl. Guess. I don't know. And Ken just, says, you think it's some 50-year-old guy running around killing everybody? And it was a 50-year-old but guy But it was about everybody. the well, killing we can't, we can't of that say, girl. Uh, right. We're not telling you who it is. I didn't know who it was until but if you, the end. But, I was really surprised. And I was, yeah, I, I was kind of happily well. surprised. They I played, liked who it was. They played that very well. Yeah. Um, I, I just... I don't think they did enough to connect the dots. I, maybe it was obvious, and I just was too obtuse to catch on. But I, when I saw it, I'm we like, had to pause for a train, so yeah, I'll give you that. But I, I don't know. It just it didn't really. The parts in the middle kind of sucked. There wasn't enough kills. There wasn't enough awesome kills. Um, it was just kind of eh. It was very close to my bloody Valentine, which we need to watch because you will say, yeah, that's okay. When I compared Rose Red to The Haunting, was I correct? Were they not like yes, very close? Yes, but we weren't reviewing Rose Red. I know. Now this movie's exactly like My Bloody Valentine. But we're not reviewing. My I know Bloody we're Valentine. not. But if somebody's seen My Bloody Valentine, they will say, and you know, they look at this, they're going, "All right, it's the same thing." This is the worst version of My Bloody Valentine. So my review is to go watch Bloody Val- My Bloody Valentine, and actually, I like the remake too. Okay. This needs a remake, and this needs a good remake. I put three out of five stars. What'd I haven't reviewed this one what yet. What would you give it? I would maybe give it two and a half. Mm. I think I'm being fair. Okay. Because I think it's just kind of a generic stalker movie. It's not. Yeah. You don't it, need a lot of was, talent. You don't was, need a lot of beauty. See, this is all these movies that followed Halloween from 78 yeah. or 79 or whatever, whenever that came out. There was a whole bunch of these that came out. So that's why you have My Bloody Valentine and... Uh, This one and all the others that came out in that same, there were just floods of them. Uh, Friday the 13th was somewhere in this bit. Just Slasher was the big thing. Um, So we have one more 80s movie, I think. When was this one out? I I can't wait for the the Amityville and it's supposed to be the shitty one. (laughs) Okay, so we've upcoming, the one I'm I'm really excited to watch is Happy Birthday to Me. Uh, Then we have the Amityville Possession and Life Force, that ends up our 80s section, and then we have Audition, so that should be in the next thing. Uh, We got a pizza in the oven that's coming out, so that's going to do it for this episode. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.